<clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show, and I'm here to talk about some wrestling wrestling news. But right before I do, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, one of my subscribers, Weston Warrior. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel, and uh, there's your quick uh, shout out there. Because I I was gonna do it last night, but I forgot about it. But I was notified, and I did. So there's your shout out. So yeah, let's into the wrestling news. I done one yesterday, but. Pendale face, um, the, some, for some reason the audio was out, I guess I forgot to turn the fucking audio on, so yeah, I decided to just cancel that and just do one the next day, let's get to some news here, so Cody Rhodes here, he sold over, sold over one million in merchandise throughout Wrestlemania 40 weekend, breaking, breaking his own record from last year's event, the source from Fightful Select, the most over-wrestler probably since Stone Cold or John Cena or The Rock. Like, he sold $1 million in merchandise over those two days. Just amazing in the face of Daddy B right now. It's funny, people say he isn't a draw, but look where he is now. I mean, just crazy how far he's come. As official render... Now it's undefeated. Un Universal Champion looks so good. Mania 40 is now is an officially now Peacock's most streamed entertainment event of all time. Yes, of all time. Across both nights, the show was viewed for 1.3 billion minutes over the weekend. It resulted in the second biggest usage weekend of Peacock of all time. It is ranking only behind the NFL wildcard game and the following day from January 13th slash 14th source variety. Everyone was tuning in to see what was going to come out of the Bloodline Cody story. They weren't disappointed. That was absolutely fantastic. Just Night 2 as a whole was really good. Bailey and EO Skype on a great match. A bunch of good stories. Just cinema. And I've already watched Night 2 made of it a few times. Like that five minute stretch with Jay Uso, Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokola, Cena, or just Cena coming out, The Rock, Undertaker. Business is booming for WWE because this is now Peacock's most stream event. And it's hard to, you know, pass wild card weekend like playoff football. So Tony Khan. Tony Khan. You know, just sick of the Tony Khan, the pathetic, childish drama of AEW. I hate to shit on wrestling, but Tony Khan, you need to do better. You need to stop acting like a child. The elite, you need to stop acting like children as well. That Those are your EVPs, ladies and gentlemen, of AEW. And Tony Khan, he confirmed Sports Illustrated that the airing of backstage footage tonight, tomorrow night on AEW from a on Dynamite from AEW All In last year is not a bait and switch. So people are thinking, oh, this is bait, this is switch. No, Tony Khan's confirmed this. Though Khan remained guarded over the exact content that will be shown. They're going to, I bet CM Punk, his bet was telling the truth, but t they're probably going to edit it in and make CM Punk look like the bad guy. They're, ju they're just doing this for ratings. This is the most desperate thing I've ever seen in wrestling. That's when you know your Tony Khan is gonna kill the company. Oh yeah, you you'll do this for a one rate for a one week pop rating, and then what's it, what's it gonna go back to seven hundred thousand viewers? AEW has a great track record of delivering what we advertise, and it is real footage. This is real life footage that affected many people. Oh really now? And it will air for the first time on TBS during Dynamite. Immature baby. You just have an immature baby that's running a wrestling company. What's the reason for this? Do we really need to re rehash something that happened eight months ago? What does it do for AEW storyline-wise? Story this does nothing to benefit. It does nothing, and he's doing it for a ratings plot. They're in shambles. They're desperate. And... Just... That's not, that's not how a professional business is run, Mr. Tony Khan. Like, 
Paul Levesque, who runs a professional business. If Punk said stuff on a MMA podcast with Ariel Hawani, why is Tony taking TV time to respond? I guess uh, TK still needs Punk to uh, pop a rating. The Bucks and Perry have been hitting each other for weeks. This won't surprise me. They can show Fudge and make it make it focused on Perry to, to go with the scapegoat story. They're going to bring back Jack Perry, probably. And if it does lead to FTR interrupting the, the build, the dynasty, interrupting to build the dynasty match, you build it with this footage? You make it seem like FTR is against the anti-punk narrative. It doesn't make sense. Desperate ratings, not to deliver anything that the fans want, like compelling storylines or booking that makes sense. We want compelling storylines or booking that makes sense. But no, Tony Khan's like, oh yeah, let's just go, let's go with some footage from All In last year, like, you're focused on a guy that doesn't work for your wrestling company. If you, that's like if WWE was focused on a former wrestler that wrestled for their that used to wrestle for their company went to AEW, but they wouldn't be focused on that. They wouldn't be delivering a footage of a backstage fight. Just, just immaturity on another level. That's why you're the lower league, Tony Collin, and AEW. That's why you're the lower league, because unlike. Because uh, WWE is a professional business, unlike you. Tony Khan. I saw another quote, Sports Illustrated. All in, the most important event in AEW history, the world record holder for most tickets ever sold for any wrestling record. Over 81,000 total, and it was an important night backstage as well. Yeah, we all know that All In was a big success. But why are you releasing... Backstage footage when CM Punk's not in the company. I mean, we don't care. Everyone knows there wasn't eighty k people there. Come on. I mean, I guess he said tickets sold, but come on. I guess Tony isn't too happy right now. Doesn't surprise me though. So per per PD, PW Insider. Stephanie McMahon has not officially returned to WWE as an employee or executive in any way, shape, or form. And I don't think she'll be an employee or executive or anything like that. And if she's not back in any capacity, it's still good to see her. I don't. I just don't think she wants to, but I think she'll probably s still be around. I just don't think she'll be like an employee or executive. But I think she'll be there, though. So, new World Heavyweight Champion Damian Priest revealed that he has signed a new contract with WWE. So, figured uh, Damian Priest will sign a new contract. So, he cashes in his contract, gets a bail, and now has a, get, gets a new contract. So, we have some uh, total gate numbers from WrestleMania. WWE's total gate for WrestleMania 40 totaled up to about 38.4 million, resulting, uh, resulting almost a 20 million gate for each night. And WWE stated that this year's gate was 70% more than WrestleMania 39's gate, which they stated was 21.6 million. I mean, business is booming. Back-to-back -back cooking revenues with Paul Levesque. Just unreal numbers. And also thanks to uh, The Rock as well. But they broke it way before him, but... It also helped with him being there. A lot, building up the feud with uh, Cody. Yeah, those are some gate numbers from WrestleMania. Some uh, press release. Uh, WrestleMania XL broke the previous gate record set by WrestleMania 39 by 78%. WrestleMania viewership was up 41% across both nights versus last year's record setting audience. WWE World at WrestleMania is now the highest grossing and most attended fan event in company history. So WWE World was also a success. WrestleMania 40 became the most socially viewed WrestleMania of all time, with over 660 million views consumed over the two days. WWE's YouTube channel saw its most viewed day in channel history on WrestleMania 40 Sunday, with more than 67 million views in 24 hours. Raw, SmackDown, NXT over WrestleMania weekend all broke attendance and or gate records. Man, business is booming. Even NXT is booming, because they had 13,000 for an NXT event. The Paul Levesque is booming. He's done miracles on me. Debbie's transition. Blood 
or um, Chef's Kiss. Vince's involvement ruined the company for so long. And now he's gone, it's booming. A Randy Orton's RKO to I Show Speed at WrestleMania 40 has now been viewed over 257 million times, I think, across WWE and Speed's social platforms. That bark had me dying. I guess people want to see him get that RKO. So, um... A match for next week, Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable for the Intercontinental, Intercontinental Championship next week of Raw in Sami's hometown of Canada. So that's going to be a banger. They're going to cook next week. That's going to be a, a banger. But Chad Gable might turn heel next week. I won't, I won't be surprised. So some news regarding Seth Rollins per Wrestling Observer a newsletter yesterday or last night. Seth Rollins will be, will be taking some time off with the hope being that it'll be for around four weeks. So it looks like it'll be a month break for Seth Rollins. I think he deserves a month off. I mean, was a part of the two-night event uh, of WrestleMania. I think he deserves time off. He can take as much time as he needs because I think he deserves it. I mean, he had a long 300-plus day reign as the World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, the reign got boring at times, but at least he was a fighting champion. But, I think he deserves some time off. I mean, I don't know what injury he has, but hopefully he takes uh, time off. I thought it would be a couple more. But something major must be about to happen and they need them. That's my only thought process. Because I was expecting a couple months. But they might be using him something for... They might be... Using him for something big. I don't know. Uh, it looks like Sheamus is going to be back. Because last night on Raw they showed a video package of Sheamus. So it looks like the Celtic Warrior is coming back soon. I hope he comes back as his original character. And, and he gets his old theme song back. But... I wonder what Sheamus is going to do. Maybe he could be in the Intercontinental title picture. I forgot why he was out for. I, I think he might have got injured. Or something. I think a, a shoulder injury. Like an arm or shoulder. So last night confirmed. On a Monday Night Raw. The WWE Draft will be taking place on the April 26th Smackdown. And then will continue on the April 29th WWE Raw. The, the Draft is really going to shake up things. With some NXT talent getting caught up as well. Should be really fun. So John Cena's uh... So John Cena says that his schedule for 2024 will be full until Christmas. And then says that he hopes he can tell the Hollywood world to maybe pump the brakes and come back to WWE for one final run. Looks like we're going to get one final run around Christmas time. And we need that final run. I think he deserves it. And one more final run until he retires. Because he also said, like, his time is, the time to compete in the ring is coming to a close. He put a line in the sand to retire before the age of 50, and it might be before that. I mean, he has a little bit of rubber left to race on WWE, but I think he'll have one final run, he'll retire, and then get probably put into the Hall of Fame. So, according to Sports Illustrated, a no numerous contacts surrounding Nick Collins that one of, that one of these potential expo expira expo explorations is to engineer a collaboration with other professional wrestling promotions. I could say TNA being an option, as a, an option, um, like New Japan and some other companies they could use. So, WWE's next pay-per-view will be Backlash Live from Lion to Scenes, France next month. Special start time, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, and 6 p.m. UK time. 1 p.m. start time, I love it. I'll, I'll be, I will be seated in my chair watching that. Uh, Bailey's next show says she wants to main event WrestleMania. Could do that next year, but we'll see. Uh, but Julia was at NXT, and they showed her uh, on... Um, they showed her... And the crowd sitting beside William Regal. And that told you she's basically signed. Because they normally do that. When they've signed somebody. And they normally show them. And Triple H. She was back there with a. Triple H gave a. Gave a. The handshake. Took a picture. So. She's pretty much signed basically. Cargo will be working. Did be live events as of next weekend. They're using, they're using her in all promotional material. Material for upcoming shows.
See, I'll talk about Julia as I was getting to. She has agreed to sign with WWE. Uh, her negotiations were a case of WWE offering more money than AEW, with there being more interest from WWE than AEW, so WWE really had more interest per Fightful Select. So, finally, Triple H gets a, person, a wrestler from New Japan. TK, TK lost out on this free agent. Because it looks like Davey's going to have Jacob Fatu and Julia. So, yeah. It's really have to save for this video. So, until next time, I'm out. Peace.